they say, marriage is an institution, but who wants to be institutionalised? Basically, it's an in instrument of control that's exercised by the government. And who in their right mind wants the government in their bedroom? I mean, have you seen them lately? Colin Barnett, that nice Mr Johnson of the uh, stop and grope laws. <coughs> and marriage is so middle of the road, let's face it. So ordinary, so 50s. Sometimes I feel in, I'm in the middle of a retro, trashy, 50s romantic novel with my fellow GLBTI comrades swooning and going dewy-eyed at the thought of wedding bells, gowns, veils, cakes, heaven help us, chapels as well. Ooh. There's a song that goes there somewhere, which I think was around about that era. And can you think of anything worse than a massive tiered cake with two Barbie doll lookalikes on the top? I mean, the icing's bad enough, but... Um, now, a little bit has been said this evening about the economics of uh, weddings and marriage. Um, and I concur with uh, my comrade over here, Aram. The cost of um, weddings um, is around about $50,000. I mean, weddings are stressful enough, especially on the hip pocket. And I also um, discovered that uh, divorce is about three times again on top of that and that seems to be almost inevitably the next step. <clears throat> I, interestingly enough, uh, have an office in, in uh, Oxford Street, Leadable, and next door to my office is a wedding gown um, <coughs> um, shop, I suppose you'd call it. Um, and uh, I have noticed, I've been doing a bit of a survey of the um, people going in and out of this particular shop, and. Um, you know, it's not been unusual to have to administer smelling salts to the uh, mothers when they uh, stagger back out onto the pavement, having been told exactly how much that gown is going to set them back. It's good for the economy. Yes! Now, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, is, this, is this an industry dedicated to sustainability? That essential, that essential green benchmark no way. Now we know that simple figures that indicate that this is going to be a wonderful boon to the faster and faster turnaround of dollars is nothing other than massive conspicuous consumption. One-off costumes, obscene limos straight off a Hollywood film set, producing an entire island's nation carbon footprint in just in the trip going round the block to the church. And then there's the travel cost. We did a little bit of uh, research on the uh, cost of the average wedding in terms of getting people there. I mean, of course, everybody's got to come, whether they live in, you know, the other side of the planet or, or, or wherever. I would suggest that the petrochemical products consumed are equivalent to clear felling the Amazon Basin. <laughs> just for one wedding. And there's only so many planets, just the one, in fact, <laughs> that we've got. And which just brings me to my next prop. Just hang on one minute, please. A flip chart. A flip chart. I hope everybody can read that. It says, be carbon friendly, be happily unmarried. I wouldn't be a true green activist. I hadn't come prepared with the banner for the right occasion. <clears throat> so, is this what we want? No way. We, the GLBTI community, want the extraordinary. We want the organic. We want the creative, the challenging. We don't want the lower bar of marriage. And in fact, in the words of Joni Mitchell, who I was just listening to this afternoon to remind myself, we don't no need no piece of paper from the City Hall keeping us tried and, tied and true. Now that's something that I grew up with and those of you who are old enough to remember, it's a very good song. We don't want to be pseudo straight. And as has been said by my fellow teammates, we're not ashamed of our culture. In fact, we're very proud of it. And we've got a very fine tradition that we'd like to uphold. Be careful what you wish for. For example, I'm sure you've all heard about shotgun marriages. 
Now, there's something else. That's not part of our policy either. That's another part of the whole sordid institution, and it's definitely going to be a problem in terms of our policy of gun control and non-violence. <laughs> I'd like you to imagine the scenario of the, uh, of, of the angry uh, father with the shotgun in his hand, firmly placed in, uh, in between Charlene's shoulder blades, blades and saying, I want you to make her you know, an honest woman. Um, it's going to happen. It's only a matter of time. Now, the next point I wanted to raise is the essential commitment of uh, giving up sex before marriage. Because we know if you're going to have a real marriage, uh, that you... I mean, everybody read the Sunday Times, I'm sure, today. There's that wonderful, gorgeous snowboarder who is the epitome of uh, commitment to uh, uh, the true way. Uh, Tora, I think her name was. That's right. Tora Bright. What a name. What a smile. And no sex for me before I marry. So be careful what you wish for. It's all part of the package. And I'm afraid... Well, I'd like to get some indication from the uh, audience tonight. How many of you are ready to be part of that deal? No, I'm talking right. <laughs> I think <laughs> fat chance. I mean, you know, really. <laughs> I don't. Oh, sorry. Can I rephrase that? Um, <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe none of the snowballs might be more appropriate giving. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and while we're at it, you might as well join a church group, of course. They're the biggest marriage cheer squad. And check out what other neoliberal views might have to go with this territory. Be very careful what you wish for. Now, in conclusion, there are some places I just don't need to go. And my list includes the following. Disneyland. The makeup department of Myers. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you ever kissed anybody with lipstick? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's nothing to do with marriage. That's a totally unrelated topic. Just gets me every time. Um, <laughs> the World Club. <clears throat> the Casino. A hen's party, or for that matter, a buck's party, or down the aisle in a white fancy dress. Thanks very much. <laughs>